second session for today. It is a talk titled Deploying and Upgrading Your First API in 30 Minutes or Less. It is by Stephen Patrick and Grace Boudet from IBM. Stephen started in IBM Client back in August 2021 as a technology engineer. He has a background in consulting from Deloitte, but he wanted to shift his focus more on cloud and decision making, so he changed to a more development related role. And Grace is an apprentice working at IBM, and she's also studying towards her technology degree. So she has experience in various technical integration tools and also React programming. So please give a round of applause to Stephen and Grace. Awesome, thanks so much for the introduction. Um, so as rightfully said, um, we're gonna be talking about deploying and upgrading your first API in 30 minutes or less. Um, a quick introduction. Um, again, for selves, um, I'm Grace, I've been at IBM two years, and I'm going into my third year of my degree. And yeah, I'm Stephen, uh, and yeah, I've been uh, around the same time as Grace, um, we've been working together for a while now, and put this uh, talk together. And I think, yeah, I just wanted to thank, obviously, uh, Data Science Festival, like, for having us, and all of you for attending the talk as well, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Awesome. Um, so we've got a little agenda today. So we've done our introductions. We're going to go through the technology that we're using, uh, who's involved. So we've got two different roles that we'll be playing. Um, we'll go through the demo architecture, and then we'll go on to the fun part, which, in my opinion, is the demos themselves. So the technology we're going to be using today is IBM API Connect. Just to clarify, you can use many, many other options. We're just choosing to use this because this is what we use on a day-to-day -day basis in our work. Um, a IBM API Connect is a management solution that creates, manages, um, secures, and socializes and monetizes APIs. Um, but there are other options you can use. Um, this is just one that uh, we would like to use for this demo. Awesome. So um, as Grace said, you know. When we built this demo out, we wanted to create some personas that we could even act out, uh, because we, these are kind of the, the regular roles that you would see uh, in pr potentially development and production environments when you are creating APIs. Um, and as Grace rightfully said, what we use today is, is what we use in our day-to-day -day roles, but this is not to say that's the only way to do it. Actually, as, as uh, this huge list shows, there's so many different ways to manage uh, your APIs, to develop them, um, and, and well, to do uh, all the things that it says there, so securing and socializing them. Um, and yeah, benefits and, and kind of drawbacks of all of them, uh, including uh, IBM API Connect. Uh, but hopefully the concepts that we show during the demos uh, are other things that you can kind of take away from this more so than the product specifically. You know, we're not here to sell anything or, or we're not being sent by IBM, I promise. Um, but the two personas that we're going to be playing, so I'm going to be playing um, the API manager. So this is someone who would be developing or potentially part of a team that develops an API. We're going to use a very basic example today just to, to keep things easy, but obviously in a, in a real um, you know, project or a real implementation, API is going to be really complex. Um, and so I'll be playing a role of someone who's developed one and wants to deploy it and have developers and, and people alike to be able to consume that API in a, in a secure manner, um, and that's what we're going to uh, see Grace doing as a developer. So, you know, Grace could maybe be developing an application that wants to make use of the API, um, and, and therefore she uses this platform to subscribe and then be able to, to run commands to, to access the API securely. So in terms of the architecture, how this looks, um, quite basic, quite, uh, so this is quite simplified, but uh, we use API Connect as kind of the interface where I can deploy and say, this is my API. And then on the, there's a slightly separate portal within the same uh, bounds of API Connect where Grace can um, securely subscribe to the API and then have all the details she needs to actually start implementing it and, and uh, making use of that. And then we'll also talk about how one might want to upgrade your, your API in, in, a, in a, a good manner to support the, the existing users. So I think with that, We'll jump into demos, um, and yeah, I think with all the toys, we'll, we'll have some time at the end for questions as well. So uh, yeah, cool. So uh, all right. So so this user interface here is API Connect. Um, 
you know, as I said, with, with the different products, you probably have some variation of this, but it's going to be very similar. You have um, an environment or an area where you can deploy your AB APIs. In this case, in API Connect, we, we call them catalogs. So that's where you can manage your catalogs. Uh, and then we have this, uh, the first kind of tile here actually takes us into where we can develop our APIs. And then what we do once we develop the APIs, we package them into products. And then that's what we can actually deploy and let people like Grace and other developers um, securely uh, look at them, and then if they wish, subscribe to them. So uh, I will add a new API. You'll see some two archived ones there, just in case anything goes wrong. Um, but we'll develop a new API. And you see immediately we get uh, some options in terms of the type of API. So we have two quite well-known specifications. So that's the open API specification. So I don't know what the, the level of expertise in the, in the room are. But depending on, yeah, e even if you've just had a look at an API doc before, uh, you'll have uh, open API tends to be the specification defined. And 3.0 is the latest version of that. You ha also have this option of deploying an ASIC API from uh, a different product in the, in the same suite. But we'll use open API, um, and we'll I'll show you kind of the editor that comes within. Um, but I, I guess while we're talking about developing APIs, this uh, is the Swagger editor. So this is where uh, like a really good way to help you when you're developing APIs, you know, when you're using your documentation or, or creating your documentation. If you're coding it like you are on the, on the left, which is a JSON uh, file, you can basically paste it in here, and you'll see it uh, tr translated to kind of a visual element on the right. And then this also is validating the JSON that you're, you're developing as well as you're writing. So if you make a change and actually you do something that isn't really allowed or isn't valid JSON, it will highlight that. And then you can actually make your fixes before you take this over to whichever platform you're going to be deploying your APIs in. So probably a really, really useful uh, editor, really useful tool for all kind of um, API developers. So um, we're going to use OpenAPI 3.0. Um, we're going to try to use the user interface as much as possible just to make things easier for us. But we can do all the tasks that I'm going to do. You can do equally by just editing the JSON um, directly. Uh, we're going to do from target service. So this API is going to be kind of a, the gel between um, wherever people want to use it and a target endpoint, so an API that already exists. And uh, so we, we've done this demo once before, and we did quite well. Quite a boring API was like a postcode API, just because it was quite easy. We thought, obviously, this being Oktoberfest, we found um, Punk API, which is all about beer. Uh, so everyone's, you know, cool, uh, common, common love in this room, hopefully. So um, we're going to use this first one to get a single beer. So if you make a curl to this uh, URL um, and then forward slash v2 beers and then give an ID one to I don't know how high it goes, you get a response that looks like this, which just gives you a bunch of information about beer. Like I said, you know, no API. No one's going to develop an API that's uh, this simple using using all of this, you know, all these tools. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of like for like you're still going to go through the same uh, development process. So uh, we'll come here and we will go to next. And I'm just going to call this the beer API, first version. Uh, so we'll leave all of that as kind of default. Gives you a base part. Uh, and then this is where you're going to put in your target service URL. You can see where I've already done it before uh, multiple times. So it's going to be the api.punkapi.com, so the first part of the URL there. Um, and then the following bit we can append later on when we're specifically saying what we want to do with each call. So at this point, we'll click Next. Just some security, um, and this kind of applies again with most APIs, if not all. Uh, so how you want to secure it, uh, you can do it in different type of tokens. Um, you know, perhaps it's one that you create at the at the time, or in terms of client ID, that's one that each application or each developer will have that then they can make their calls in uh, for, for themselves to make it securely as well. And then we, we enable calls as well um, to to kind of avoid any issues or in in terms of security as well. So. A bit more customization there if we want, but we'll leave it as default. And that's it. So we've gener it generates the definition for us and applies those security rules that we apply. And then we come into this user interface, uh, which is the API designer. So as I mentioned, so you can see this uh, quite easy, uh, easy to read user interface in the middle here. You can see the server, so the base path, uh, the security. And if I come down parts, we'll see that for the, the base parts, so just forward slash, we have all these different operations. So your get, 
output. And uh, these are just different ways you can interact with an API. So you can get information from uh, an external server. You can put uh, uh, data there, and, and so on. Now, we're just going to keep it quite simple. So we're just going to do get. Uh, get so we're just going to fetch some data. So in this case, we're going to fetch that beer information. <laughs> So I can, I can edit the uh, API directly here. I'm just, I can you know, click Delete, and that's going to delete the put, and I can do each. Equally, if I click the Source button, uh, very similar to, to, to the Swagger editor, you get an editor within here that kind of shows you the, 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 the legit definition. So you could copy this and then deploy in, in any other platform as well. Um, and yeah, like I said, I only want the get, so I'm going to remove all of these in one uh, there. Oh, and I don't want patch either, so I'll get rid of that. And uh, we're now at a state where we just have the get on the left. You can see that how it kind of live updates. So um, I'm going to just change, and I'm going to go back to the editor just to be easier. Uh, change the path that then we can actually pass in a parameter in the, in the path itself to make it easier for us. In this case, what we need when we want to get a singular beer is the beer ID. So any, any number, basically, one to, uh, yeah. I don't know what the, what the limits are, but we just want uh, the user to always provide a beer ID. So I'm going to put that in, curly brackets, because it's going to be a parameter, and we'll, we'll grab that later. So then within get, you can see there's uh, some further stuff that we can set to it, tags, and, and, and a lot more. We'll keep it uh, straight, but we, we want to define the parameter that I just mentioned, so the beer uh, API. So, oh, that didn't update. So um, beer ID, save that. There we go. And then under operations, under get, we're going to add that as a parameter. So if I call it the exact same thing, beer ID, and we can define where it's located in. So you might have it in your headers, you might have it in your query. In this case, it's going to be, oh, not a cookie, it's going to be a path. So it's going to be within the call that you make to um, it, well your API. So we'll do that. We're going to set it as required, because we need that in order to make the call successfully. And we'll set. Um, as a string. I guess you could do a number as well, but I think string, string tends to um, keep, it, keep it quite simple. The final thing we need to do on this particular area uh, that does help, so you get like the response and you can set other ones, so what do you want it to, res if you want to customize the response for let's say an error, maybe an unauthorized error, maybe you want a custom message, you can set that here. By default, we've got the 200, so the successful um, response. And what we can do under here is actually define what the content looks like for the application JSON. So um, if you give a prov uh, provide an example value, it might actually help uh, uh, the, the API um, accept, accept that response. So that's going to be an array. And uh, for an example, to get the example value, we can just make a direct call ourselves, which is what, what the API that I'm going to deploy will do eventually anyways. But if I do that, you see the response come back from the Punk API. So I'll just copy this and then provide this to the example value. Let's see, you've got that done there. If I hit save, it, at, every time you're hitting save, uh, and every time you're moving between screens, uh, the, the, pro, uh, the service is checking if the JSON is valid. So if you make any changes directly here, it will check, is it valid JSON, is it going to pass or not? Um, but obviously, if you're doing it via the user interface, you minimize any kind of issues there. So that's all done here. We've almost completed the, the design of the API. So the only other thing we need to do is um, tell uh, the, the API um, and, and kind of the, the process we want or the logic we want when it's invoked. Right now, what's going to happen is we'll hit it. Uh, it you know, we'll provide the beer ID, but that actually doesn't matter. If we see this URL here on the, on the right, the target URL, that's all that's hit. And the target URL is, is the one I set earlier. So that was just api.pank, api.com. We haven't actually indicated much else. So what we need to say is that we want the second part here. So we can actually just add that. That URL to be invoked is now beers. Um, but rather than just beer ID being one, we obviously want to grab that from the parameters. So if we do uh, dollar sign, we should be able to do request dot parameters uh, dot beer ID and close that. And that should be everything we need to do in terms of def definition. And we'll find out when I test it. Um, so we'll set it to online, because that means we can actually test it. 
and we'll come here and you can see it obviously we've only got the one um, uh, operation uh, which is the get um, so I can replace that maybe set it to one as before and see what response we get. We get a 200, so that's good news. And we get the object back that we're expecting. So it's a nice way to test it before we actually deploy um, this for, for developers. So I shall set this back to offline. And the final thing I need to do um, as the API manager is get this accessible to uh, the likes of Grace. And to do this, we publish it as a product. So we'll create a new product, and I'm just going to call this beer API product. And it's the first version again. So keep that as default. It's going to be created, and it's just going to ask which catalog. Like, where do we want this deployed? You might have realistic. You're going to have multiple different catalogs, maybe, uh, especially if you have a whole host of uh, APIs that you, you want to deploy for different use cases. That's everything I need to do here. Keep this as default, and we'll publish that. So if I come down to manage my catalog, um, you'll be able to see my product is now at uh, published and right now, unfortunately, only zero subscriptions. So um, we'll let Grace uh, take us on. You might just need to log into the developer portal. But awesome. yeah, thanks, go Stephen. So as a developer, I'm going to go to my developer portal. Um, hopefully, so I need to log in. Um, so I will just sign in. If I can remember the password. I can't remember the password. <laughs> no, we can grab it. Oh, uh, this happens to you on a daily basis. <laughs> Classic. One second. It's not a live demo if you know something doesn't go wrong. So, uh, one sec. Da, 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 da. Is it a message? Oh, it's doing a capital. Oh, you thought it was really secure, I like it, yeah. No. Now that I've signed in, I can <laughs> see the product. Um, so before I even try and uh, do anything with the product, I actually need to create an application to host it. So to do that, I'm going to go to Apps, um, and I'm going to create a new app. I can see that I've already got one archived. I'm going to give it a title of a uh, beer app, maybe, for example. Um, I don't really need to give it a description, but if you wanted to, you can give it a description. The same with the URL. If you wanted to give one, you can give one. Um, so I'll save that. And then I've got these uh, credentials. I do need to save these credentials, so I'm going to, especially the API key, so I'm going to copy this and uh, save it into notes. Yep. And I will also save my secret and save that into my notes too, because I'll need this later on. Um, I'll press OK. Hopefully, now my application has been created. I can now um, sub I can now add a subscription to my application, um, so I can browse the available APIs, and I can see that the Beer API product is available, and um, I can select the default plan for it. Um, and now I can see on my uh, Beer app. Uh, hopefully, I have got a subscription. I can just select next. Um, and this is going to give me a little summary of it, and I'm now done with it. So now my API is ready to use. I've done it to an application. So if I select it, I can now see the uh, API that Stephen's created. Um, so this kind of page here just gives me all the details about it. It tells me what I need to make sure that I have when I do the command. Um, there's two ways of testing it. I can either try it within uh, the application itself, um, or I can actually try it in the command line interface. Um, for this part, I'm going to try it in the command line interface. So I'm going to copy this. Um, and I'm going to paste it here. Um, I need to add a dash K to the beginning of it uh, so that it goes over the security. Um, I want to take my uh, API key and put it where the client ID is. And then I want to get rid of the beer ID and actually give it a beer ID. So I'm going to just choose 25 because it's my favorite number. Um, I can now copy this and paste it into my terminal. And hopefully, it won't give me an error. Yay, it hasn't given me an error. Um, so the, you can see that, um, I can make it bigger, um, that it's brought me back uh, the beer that has the, uh, the 
ID of 25, and we can see that that is a spiced wheat beer. And I can change that each time. So if I wanted to maybe make it um, a different number, so say 20, and paste that in again, I get a different one this time. I get a imperial wheat beer again. But there we go. I'll hand back over to Stephen. Cheers. Awesome. So you can see how quickly you know, we've been able to develop to deploy IAPI, and then Grace as a developer has been very, very simply been able to actually uh, have access um, and see, obviously, right now, we're, we're just taking an API and we're making another API to call to it. But imagine you have your application actually hosted somewhere, and that's where uh, you, you, that's where you want to make the API call. This is this is the, the ideal way, way, or this is the process that you would follow to get to that point where you can make these calls um, securely. And we've got the the client ID for that. Now, um, the the next part of this, oh, I hope it's, that's all good. Uh, so the next part of this is more around uh, the lifecycle management of an API. Obviously, you're not going to ever just, well, very unlikely to just stick on your version one and the first part of, or the first version you've ever deployed of the API. You are going to make changes. Um, hopefully, you are going to make it better, but the, the sometimes there's essential things you have to do, security changes, et cetera. Um, so the, the question is, how do you do that uh, you know, whilst managing those existing developers, but also making it uh, available to the to the new developers, so that that's just the main consideration you need to have is you know all all the the potential and existing users of your API. So, if I switch back um, to where I created my first version, uh, we'll go back to de uh, develop, and we're going to take what we have already created and save as a new version, and we're just going to have this as the version 2.0. We're not going to do anything groundbreaking, uh, but I want to add this new uh, or, or additional uh, feature where they can do uh, get forward slash random, and then they'll, they'll get a random beer so they don't have to always uh, provide an ID. So we see version two of our beer API is right there, so we shall open that up. Now, it's going to be a very similar process to before. Um, so previously, our path, we had one path, which was forward slash beer ID. Now we want to create a new path that's going to be forward slash random. This can be literally whatever because it not it doesn't have to be doesn't have to correlate to the API that we're using as a target endpoint. This is th what I'm defining that you users like Grace have to add on to uh, my API. So we're just going to keep it as random, and we will create that. And uh, we actually have no parameters um, for this. Uh, 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 you know, for random, you don't have to pass anything. You you just have to say, you know, go to the random. So then we can add a new operation. It's going to be a get, and we can keep everything else as uh, normal. Uh, like I said, no parameters, and we have again this response of a 200, and we want to define that the content coming back is going to be of uh, application JSON, and again we can just take this as an example. So the JSON document has an example value stored in it. So if I paste that in, same as before, hopefully uh, that looks familiar now. Save that, and we're almost there actually. Quite quickly, we've uh, added uh, an additional um, kind of feature to an API. But if you remember when we defined our gate gateway here, we said when you invoke um, no matter what, I mean, how you invoke, it doesn't really matter. We want to go to the target URL, you want to go to beers, and then you want to get um, or pass to a beer ID. Now the problem is, if Grace were to use this new version and go to forward slash random, there isn't going to be a beer ID, and this is going to fail. It's going the wrong way. So we need a bit of logic. So we use um, an operation switch. So this basically allows you to have multiple cases, and these cases are going to be correlated to each uh, command. So we get get beer ID as one. Um, and uh, I think if I just add, oh no, I think I can just add it here, sorry. Case one, and the case one's going to be our new get random. So I'm going to move this invoke within this uh, get beer ID, and then just create a brand new one to uh, occur. Oh, that wants to just go there. That's going to go when they go forward slash random. So it's going to be very similar URL. But uh, rather than uh, get anything from parameters, we don't need that this time, we're just going to go to the random, which is the URL we saw here. That should be everything that I need to do. So if I hit Save, we can do exactly what we did last time, set it to online just to test it, um, like every good uh, developer would do, hopefully. And uh, we'll put up the random, 
and hopefully we should see another success, but this time it's going to be, yeah, ID136. Every time we hit it, obviously going to be a different beer. Uh, but that's great. I've just you know, added some additional, uh, uh, additional functionality to my API, uh, and now I want um, the public to be able to use it. Uh, so I'll go back and I shall uh, create a new product so I can publish this. Um, and again, I'm going to call this beer API product. Uh, but this one is going to be version 2. And once that goes through, similar, it's going to ask us which catalog. Um, so we will just do that. That's great, right? So under products, now we have version 1 and version 2. Now, actually, the, the way this is set up now is that if someone logs in, they're going to see both version 1 and version 2.0 of our product that they can subscribe to. Um, that's fine or, or can be fine, uh, but maybe you want actually all new users to just go for 2.0. It's got all the best functionality, all the best security. Um, but how do I do that without just forcing Grace to move to 2.0 or completely retiring the, retiring the API that she's already made use of um, to allow her to kind of uh, move up at, at, at her own pace? So we can see one, one, uh, two there, and we have this option, or we have plenty of options under the options. Um, and you know, I can retire, I can deprecate it if I want to do better. But there's this option to supersede it. So the version one, I can supersede uh, version two, and we get a bit of a description what this means for developers. But it basically means that Grace will now be indicated that she should move to or can move to version 2.0, but there's no. Uh, you know, she, she can continue to use version one as as much as she's pos as much as she wants, um, and this, uh, but it means for new developers that they only see the newest version. So set that and supersede it, and that's all we can see. And we can see now version one has already been updated to deprecated. So slowly we can phase it out. And let's say maybe you see the subscriptions fall, then uh, you know when you're when you're safe to do so, you can even retire it if you need to. So on that, I can pass back to you on the de de developer side. Awesome, thanks, Stephen. So if I go back to uh, my main page, I can still see, I can see that Beer API product 2.0 has come up. But for me to use that, I need to make sure that I subscribe my old one to that. So to do that, I'm going to go to my apps. I'll go to my Beer app. And hopefully, I can go to subscriptions. And at the bottom, I can say I can migrate the subscription from um, to the Beer API product at version 2.0, which is what I want to do to be able to use the new feature that uh, Stephen's added. Um, it's reminding me here that if I do choose to do this, I can't go back. Um, but I want to do this because I want to use the new feature. So if I go migrate subscription, um, I can see that the subscription has been migrated successfully. Awesome. So I can go back to my apps. I can go back down to my subscriptions, select it. And then that brings me to my app API. And when I select it, I can see that the new feature's there. Um, so like I said earlier, there's actually two ways of testing this working. I said you could do it in the command line, or you could try it within the application. So I'm going to try it within the application this time. If I press try and then send, I can see that it comes up with the most random beer ever. So this one's called Black Hammer. But if I send it again, I'll get another one called uh, Hazy Jane. Um, so there's a selection of different ways you can do it. Um, and I think that kind of finishes our demo. Very nice. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cool. So very, yeah, I mean, a very quick summary of uh, kind of the API development process, how uh, ones, and actually we had a little summary slide. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, so in, well, 30 minutes or so, I think, um, we have uh, shown the process of creating and deploying the first API, the first version, uh, and then as a developer, how they can securely sec uh, subscribe to that. Um, but then the key part of, of following on from that is how, uh, how, you, how do you approach an upgrade? Um, how do you do that in a way where you can support all the users, uh, both old and new? Um, and then how does the developer actually have that process? So. These are the key, I guess, takeaways. And I think you know what we wanted to reiterate throughout the whole talk is this isn't the only way to do this. This platform isn't the only way to carry out these kind of activities. There's a lot of other ways. Um, and you know, before management uh, uh, platforms came around, you you know you could do this straight from your uh, kind of API documentation, uh, API doc, and uh, make those changes. Now we have all these tools like 
API Connect and the ones that we talked about earlier that make this process a lot more managed. Um, and that means you can kind of provide better support for, for uh, I guess, your users. But I think that concludes our talk. So yeah, we have a bit of time for questions, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, either about this or anything that you guys want to ask about. So thank you very much. Do we have any questions? If not, then I thank you, Stephen and Grace, for the insightful presentation. And please give a round of applause again. <laughs> thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. At 10.30, we have a coffee break for half an hour. And the next sessions will resume from 11 o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>